Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a project to display the temperature and the humidity using the Arduino Uno, the temperature and the humidity sensor, either the DHT11 or DHT22, and a segment e-ink display, which is probably the most interesting part on this project, at least for me. And since this is e-ink display, you can just disconnect it from the power and it will still show the values, which is kind of cool, right? Before we get to the video, let me talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is, wait for it, PCBWay. Yes, it's PCBWay. And if you use the link down in the description, you can get 10 PCBs for free, only paying for shipping, which is kind of cool, right? Please ignore the letter W, which unfortunately cannot be properly displayed on this display. So let's get back to the video. So let's get started. And we'll start with the display itself. So this is the 1.9 inch segment e-paper module from Waveshare. And if I open the about page, there is a connection listed for the Arduino. So I will use the very same connection on my end. And then what I want to do is download this zip file and extract it somewhere. So in there, there are files for all the microcontrollers. So I'll open the Arduino folder, open this folder, and open this INO file in the Arduino IDE. This sketch uses the EPD 1 inch 9 library, but there is no need to install the library because it's already included in the project file in the project folder. And since there is not too much comments in this sketch, probably the best way to start is to just upload it to Arduino and see what this does. So I will select the right board, in my case that's Arduino Uno, and right board, and then hit the upload button. And if I have the display properly connected, I should see something like this. So it first clears the display and then it displays zeros, ones, twos, threes, and so on and so on until it displays all the individual segments at the same time. After that, it just stops. And if you want to see it again, you have to restart Arduino hitting the restart button on the Arduino board. So let's jump back to the code and see what's actually happening. So first there's some initialization and turning the display on and off several times, which is something that you would usually do with e-ink displays to make sure that the pixels or segments are displayed properly. And then the interesting part starts here. So we write the screen with some values, which is this DSP number 1 inch 9 W0, 1, 2 and 3, which is for drawing all zeros, all ones, all twos, all the way to everything being lit up. And if I open this CPP file, those DSP nums are actually variables, and you can see it's being pre-filled with some values. And those values are partially explained in the documentation. So if I scroll down a little bit, let's start with one bit. So one bit can control one segment either being on and off. And if I combine eight bits, it's just one byte. So one byte can control eight different bits. And if I jump back to the code, you can see that this is actually one byte. The variable type is set to character, but pretty much character equals byte. The thing is that one digit uses 13 different segments, so you cannot use just one byte, you have to actually use two bytes to set one digit. Now here comes the confusing part. The numbers on the left side are the actual digits. So for example, for digit number 2, the first byte should be set to FD and the second byte should be set to 17. On the other hand, the numbers on the right side are actually the sections of the display. So if you want to display the digit 2 on the section 1 and 2, you actually set it to FD17. So if I open the code, I want to display the digit 2 on position 1 and 2, position 1 and 2 are those, so the position 0, 1 and 2, should be set to FD17, which is of course matching the FD and 17 in the documentation, and it's actually repeating itself, so FD17, FD17 and so on, because we are displaying the digit number 2 on every position. So we need to put the values for the left byte and the right byte into our code. So I'll jump to the main file and create a new variable, which I'll for example call digit left and digit right and both of those should be arrays, and inside those arrays I will copy those values, so this is the left byte and this is the right byte, so the first one will be 0xbf, 0x00 and so on, so 0xfd and like so. I will put one more enter into both arrays and it will be 0x00, which is for showing nothing and that will be helpful in case we don't want to show certain digits. I will also copy this variable for showing nothing and rename it to e-ink segments. So this is the variable that we will display all the time, but we will be changing the content to show the correct values based on our needs. Let's make some slight changes to the code and see if our approach works. We probably don't need to turn the screen on and off in here, and we don't need to cycle through all the individual digits, so we only need the one call of the write screen function. And of course we want to write the e-ink segments. Now for now the e-ink segments is all white or all empty, so nothing will be displayed, so let's just change it and say that for example on the position 5 and 6 we want to show digit number 2. So I will say that the e-ink segments on the position number 5 will be the left part of the digit number 2 and the e-ink segments number 6, so the right part of the digit, will be the right part of the digit 2. Let's upload this to Arduino and see what we got. And indeed, the display shows just the number 2 as the first digit for the humidity. But of course, we don't want to manually type in the values, so let's just create a new variable that will store all the digits that should be displayed. And let's call those temperature digits and humidity digits. Both of those variables should be arrays, 
and we will store the individual digits. For now, let's just hard code those digits. So for example, for the temperature, we will display 123.4 and for the humidity, we will display 56.7. We just need to update the code down here. So for example, the e ink segments 0 will be the first digit from the temperature digits. So it will be the left part of the temperature digits number 0. The e ink segments 1 will be again the digit left from the temperature digits number 1. The e ink segment 2 will be the right part, so it will be the digit right of the temperature digits 1. The segments 3 and 4 will be the second digit from the temperature digits. Note that the fourth digit is actually index 11 and 12, and it will be digit 3 from the array of temperature digits. And we will use the very same approach for the humidity. Those indexes are 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. And we are referencing digits from the array humidity digits this time, and it will be digits 0, 1 and 2. Let's try to upload this on the Arduino, and you will notice two things. We don't see the first digit, the digit number 1, and we also don't see the symbol points, degrees Celsius and percentage sign. So let's solve this one by one. If you look at the documentation, it says that the number 1, when displayed on position 1, which is actually position 0, should be 1F, and when it's displayed on any other position, it should be 001F, so the 00 means that the left side is empty, and 1F that the 1 is displayed on the right side. When we look at our code, we are displaying the left digit, which means that we are displaying 00 for 1, so it makes sense that nothing is being displayed, so what we need to do is we need to actually set the first digit to be digit right. So in that case we will either show 1f or we will also show 0, 0 if nothing is being displayed. And we don't have to care about all the arrow values because for position 0 we can only display number 1 or nothing. As for the decimal point and the percentage sign we can also look at the documentation which says the decimal point and the percentage sign are the fifth place in the fourth, eighth and tenth positions respectively. Which means that we need a new byte. So in position 4 we need a new byte and we need to count from the right side. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 and 5 and the 5th bit should be 1. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and the 5th bit should be 1. Now we can keep it like this or we can add 2 additional bits to have 8 bits so it kind of looks better. We need to somehow combine this 1 bit which sets the decimal point together with this digit. And for that we will use a bitwise operator and we will use this nice looking GIF animations from Bokwe to visualize what we want to do. We want to use the OR operators so whether there is 1 in the left number or the right number there will be one in the final number. So we will use this OR bitwise operator and I will just add a small comment saying that this is the decimal point. Let's jump back to documentation and make sure that we put those into right places. So it should be on the fourth place, it should be on the eighth place, so here, and it should also be on the tenth place. But on the tenth place, this is actually not the decimal point, but that's the percentage sign. Let's upload this on Arduino and see what happens. And we indeed see the missing number one as well as the decimal points and the percentage sign. The digits that we display are still hard coded though, so let's try to display their digits based on some floating point values. For that we will use the modulo function and I will demonstrate this in Excel. So this is our value and we will use the modulo function to modulate this number by 10 which will give us one digit but it actually gives us also the decimal point so we need to first convert this number to integer and then it should give us only one digit which is digit 3. If you want to get another digit we can divide this by 10 that will give us number 2 or we can divide it by 100 that will give us number 1. If you want to get the decimal point we just multiply it by 10. So with knowing that, let's just do this in our code. The only difference is that in Excel the module is MOD function, while in Arduino it's written as a percentage sign. So in Arduino we will create two new floating point variables. The first one will be temperature value, and let's just predefine it with the very same number as 123.4. The second variable will be a humidity value. Again, for now we'll just set it to 56.7. Then we will set the individual digits accordingly. So the temperature digits index 0 should be the temperature value divided by 100, converted to integer value, and then modulo by 10 and we will do the similar things for the other digits except of course the first digit will be divided by 10 the second digit will be as is and the last digit the fourth digit will be multiplied by 10 and we will do the very same thing with the humidity digits but of course instead of using the temperature value we will be using the humidity value so the digit number 0 is divided by 10 the digit number 1 is the same and the digit number 2 is multiplied by 10 before uploading this to Arduino let's make some changes to the default values so for example for the temperature let's just set it to 1.2 and for the humidity let's just set it to 3.4. Upload this on Arduino and see what happens. And we see that the numbers are displayed correctly but we see the leading zeros and we also see this number one which is actually not the number one it's just a part of the digit zero. So we need to adjust the code to not show the leading zeros because it doesn't look nice. And that should be a simple change. So we will say that if the temperature is smaller than 100 in that case the first digit the digit number zero should be index of 10. And if you scroll up we see that the index of 10 is actually the empty digit. It's showing 
doing nothing. And we will do the same also for the other digit. So we will also say that if the temperature is smaller than 10, then the second digit will be 10, actually, which means not showing. If the value is smaller than 1, we probably do want to show the leading zeros. So we just need to do the same thing for the humidity, saying if the humidity value is smaller than 10, the first digit, the digit number 0, will be not visible. Let's upload it again and see if there is any difference. And there should be because now we don't see any leading zeros and looks fine. The last change for the display might be also displaying the degrees Celsius or degrees Fahrenheit and maybe those extra additional symbols for the Bluetooth and battery. And again, this is described in the documentation. So the 13th position can display the Celsius or Fahrenheit as well as the Bluetooth logo and the battery indicator. So in our code, we will set the position 13 and I will set it to 0x05 for the degrees Celsius. And I will also combine it with the Bluetooth logo, which is the first position. So 0, 1, 2, 3. I will also add the additional bits, although it's not needed. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have 8 bits. And I will also combine it with the battery, which is the bit number 4. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Don't forget to change the index to be 13. And one last upload to Arduino. Hopefully now we will see everything that we need to see, which seems to be the case. So at this point, we only need to get some real data from the temperature and the humidity sensor and display it on this e-ink display. And so for the sensor, you can either use this blue one or the white one. So the blue one is DHT11. It's a little bit cheaper, but it has lower precision. The white one is DHT22. It's still quite cheap and it can give you much more precise readings. However, no matter which sensor you choose, it's always better to get it as a module because then you don't have to worry about adding additional required components like pull-up resistors. The great thing about the HT22 is also it's supported on the Walkway website, which is a free online Arduino emulator. So if I scroll down a little bit, I can open the example, which is the DHT lip example. And if I run this example, it should give me the readings for the humidity and temperature. Now, obviously, this is not measuring the real world data. I can just click this and set it manually, but I can use the same sketch and try to run it on the real Arduino. I will copy the code into Arduino IDE and then go to sketch, include library, manage libraries. In here, type in DHTLEB and install this library. You can see our have this installed. Upload this to Arduino. And once this is uploaded, open the serial monitor, make sure that the speed is set to 1150.00, and you should see the very similar readings as you are seeing in the Walkway website, but now it's using the real world data from the sensor, of course, in case you have it connected to Arduino, which means that the only missing piece is somehow merging this code for reading the temperature and the humidity using the sensor with our code for driving the e-ink display. So on the left side is the code for the e-ink display, on the right side is the code for the sensor. So let's start with the code for the e-ink display. You will notice that all our code is inside the setup, so it will be only run one, but we want to of course run it repeatedly so we need to move some stuff into the loop function and we'll pretty much move almost everything into loop function except for this initialization for the serial data and the e ink display so starting from here down to here i will just move it into the loop function and we probably don't need to end this uh, serial and the wire so i will delete those two lines and maybe put one more additional delay maybe like two seconds because we don't need to update the display that often and we actually need only very little code from the sensor code so we definitely need to include the library and set the right pin so i'll just copy it in there but after that, we only need to read the data using this function. So read 22 for the HD22. So I'll put this inside the loop function. And then we need to get the temperature and the humidity, calling the HD humidity and the HD temperature. And we already have the variables. So the temperature should be stored inside the temperature value. So temperature value equals the HD temperature. And the humidity should be stored inside the humidity value. So humidity value equals the HD humidity. And I think that that should be enough, at least for the starting point. So let's upload it to Arduino and see if we can display some real world data on the e-ink display and that seems to be the case so now we are getting the real temperature and the real humidity and that's pretty much it i really like how this display looks like and i hope that you will be able to use this in your own projects if you have any questions please put those down in the comment section and i hope to see you next time thanks and bye oh yeah and if you like arduinos and displays be sure to check out my other videos for example this one which is definitely worth checking